Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus into this world to give us hope and to give us strength, to give us forgiveness, to give us power. Father, please help us to give you, to give you our life, to give you ourselves so that your will and that alone can be worked out through us so that we can represent you. Oh, Father, forgive us for all the times in which we have failed and come short of your perfect character. Please forgive us for not representing you the way that would bring glory to you. Thank you so much that Jesus died to forgive and to cleanse, to make us whiter than snow. Dear Father, we need discernment. We need to be able to see things clearly, but our minds are so dull and we don't see things clearly. Because we don't and because we have such a need, we pray. We pray for the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and to give us discernment, to clear our minds so we can see, truly see, the great controversy that's going on all around us. Please anoint our eyes that we can see. Please guide us as we Seek to understand what's going on in our world today in the light of the great controversy between you and the devil. We just thank you for your promise. I won't leave you comfortless. I'll come to you. We thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like you to open your Bibles this afternoon to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. This is uh, Behind the Door, part 36, and I have entitled it today, The Passion. Behind the Door, part 36, The Passion. Revelation chapter 16, starting with verse 13. The Bible says, And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So the Bible indicates that there would be three unclean spirits that would come out of the mouth, it's through their voice, because it's through the mouth that we speak, so the dragon would speak a message to us, the beast would speak a message, and the false prophet. And they united would give messages in the world to prepare the world for that great battle of that great day of God. Now let's analyze these three characters for a moment. The mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, and the mouth of the false prophet. Let's look at them in order. The mouth of the dragon. The mouth of the dragon, of course, Revelation 12, verse 9, it tells us who the dragon is. Revelation 12, 9 says, The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. 
He was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So the dragon is the devil. And how does the devil, what particular mechanism does the devil use to deceive the world? What mechanism is it? The Catholic Church, Dennis, okay, no question that the devil uses the papacy. No doubt about it, Dennis. The mouth of the beast, Dennis, in the same passage, the mouth of the beast is the Catholic Church. Okay? The dragon is spiritualism. Because it's through spiritualism that the devil, that's the glue that the devil uses to bring all the forces of planet earth together. It's spiritualism. So the dragon's voice is the, it's the voice of spiritualism. The mouth of the beast, as Dennis clearly enunciated there, of course the papacy or Roman Catholicism. And the mouth of the false prophet. Who's the false prophet of Revelation 16, 13? Apostate Protestantism. That's right. So we have a threefold union of spiritualism, Catholicism, and apostate Protestantism. And it will be through those three arms that the devil will seek to gather in all the world under his control. Spiritualism, Catholicism, and apostate Protestantism. And the Bible indicates these are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now, this afternoon in light of Revelation 16 and our understanding of the role of spiritualism at the end of earth's history, I want us to take a look at some documentation as far as the movie The Passion by Mel Gibson. Number one, where did the script for the movie The Passion come from? Let me read to you a few statements. The script was written in English and translated into Aramaic and Latin by a Jesuit priest, Father William J. Fulco. Gibson claims that the film is faithful to the scriptures. Okay? Now, I have read many, many different accounts, as I'm sure many of you have, that Mel Gibson has declared that he got the script right from the Bible. Well, if you read very carefully, Mel Gibson does not stop there. I have read it in many, many places. This is one of them. Mel Gibson not only claimed that he got it from the Bible, but he also based his script on the visions of two Catholic mystic nuns. Saint Anne Catherine Emmerich, an 18th century Augustinian nun, and Mary of Agreda, a 17th century Franciscan nun. According to Mel Gibson, he said this in commenting about Anne Catherine Emmerich, one of these mystic Catholic nuns. Gibson said, she supplied me with stuff I never would have thought of.
another internet article. And folk, the thing that I find, some people say, oh, can't, can't do it. If it's from the internet, there's too much junk and, and you can't, you can't uh, believe it. Well, yes, there's junk and yes, there's outlandish things. However, when you see something repeated four to six times, you begin to realize that it's authentic. Mel Gibson has stated this in television interviews. And this is something that a gentleman by the name of David Limbaugh wrote on an internet website called www.townhall.com. In this man's article, he obviously is in support of the movie. And he is simply commenting on it. This is what he said. For the script, Mel Gibson and his Jesuit co-author relied on the New Testament Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as well as the diaries of St. Anne Catherine Emmerich, and Mary of Agrada's The City of God. So Mel Gibson bases the passion on the Gospels and the visions of Anne Catherine Emmerich and Mary of Agrada. Now these two women, Anne Catherine Emmerich and Mary of Agrada, both had attributed to them the gift of prophecy. They were mystics. They were nuns. They both saw apparitions of the Virgin Mary. Where, and I'll quote from some sources here, this, is, this one's from www.catholicforum.com. Where did these visions of these nuns come from? And now I quote from catholicforum.com, who is speaking admirably about these two women. In particular, this quote is about Mary of Agreda. Mystic, Visionary. She was given to ecstasies and trances. She had the gift of bilocation. In some of her trances, she said she was teaching Christianity to people in foreign lands. A vision of her known as the Lady in Blue was simultaneously reported teaching the native Taguas and Kadoas in the areas of what are now New Mexico and Texas. Mary of Agreda received an apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which led to her enormous work, the mystical city of God. Now, let's notice that for just a moment. First off, she wrote a work called The Mystical City of God. Now, if you and I talk about the mystical city of God, what are we talking about? New Jerusalem. Probably the New Jerusalem. Do you know what Mary of Agreda's book, The Mystical City of God, was about? It was about Mary. Mary is the mystical city of God. I don't know. That is bizarre, Paul. That's exactly right. Now, I want, to, I want you to notice something else. These two Catholic mystics that received visits or apparitions of the Virgin Mary, what did they actually see? 
they actually saw and were visited by demons. Because we know from Scripture that when a person dies, the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. So for them to say that they have received a vision from the Blessed Virgin Mary, they have actually been visited by demonic spirits. And those demonic spirits have then inspired them to write out things. Mary of Agreda, the mystical city of God, was inspired by demonic spirits. Saint Anne Catherine Emmerich, who wrote some very, very large books, which we will talk about momentarily, she received her visions from demonic spirits. And so Mel Gibson, in writing the script along with this Jesuit Bill Fulco, he said he got it from the Gospels and from demonic spirits. Now he didn't say that. He said he was getting it from Mary of Agreda and St. Anne Catherine Emmerich. But they got their visions from demonic spirits. Therefore, the passion is based on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the visions of demonic spirits. Okay? Here's another quote from www.catholictreasures.com. Obviously, another very positive look at uh, these visionaries that Mel Gibson used. And I quote, Mary of Agreda, the mystical city of God, her book, can be called Our Ladies. Now when the Catholic Church uses the word Our Lady, what are they talking about? Mary. They're talking about Mary. This the mystical city of God can be called Our Lady's autobiography because it was Mary herself who revealed it in mystic vision to its author. The Spanish Franciscan nun, Mother Mary of Jesus of Agreda. So the mystical city of God is a autobiography of the Virgin Mary, written by Mary of Agreda, but she received it through the demon spirit of Mary. Going on. A spiritual classic, this website calls it, which has been acclaimed by popes, cardinals, and theologians. Contains information on the meaning of the apocalypse, Lucifer's rebellion, the location of hell, and many other enthralling topics. Our Lady reveals that she never appeared older than 33. She ate fruit, vegetables, and fish, but no meat. That the very presence of the Christ child cured the sick and exercised demons, plus much, much more. And here is a quote. Just as I have told you that he who knows me knows also my father, so now I tell you that he who knows my mother knows me. Now that's one of the individuals that was the inspiration for the passion. Now there's two great focuses Before I go on, let me make one comment. I have not seen the movie The Passion. 
and I am not going to see the movie, The Passion. I am stating these things based on the research that I have done. And what I have heard people say to me, and I will share one of those momentarily. This is from another article that I got. It says, although Mr. Gibson is Roman Catholic and the movie is replete with Catholic touches, is that based on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? No, it's not. It's not based on Paul either. John Paul. Oh, it's but yes. <laughs> I didn't hear the John in front of me. Now notice what it goes on to say. It says it's replete. That means it's full of Catholic touches. Notice what it says. Like the stations of the cross and the centrality of Mary. The other clear focus from what I understand of the movie The Passion, it's the brutal, destructive focus on the physical suffering of Christ. Now folk, if you take a clear look at the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, the greatest suffering that Christ experienced was not physical at all. It was the spiritual struggle, the war to continue to remain in submission to His Father in spite of everything the demons threw at His mind. So the movie is so Catholic because the Catholic Church always focuses on the physical sufferings of Christ rather than the spiritual sufferings. And as this internet article stated, it also focuses on the centrality of Mary. Did he get that from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? If you go back and you take the closing scenes of Jesus' life, you will find Mary mentioned one time. And the time she is mentioned is when Jesus is on the cross and he looks down and he sees John and his mother and he says, Woman, behold your son, and son, behold your mother. That is the only time. So where did Mel Gibson get all of these other pictures where this internet article could say, that Mary is a central focus of the movie. Where did he get that? He got it from the visions of Anne Catherine Emmerich and Mary of Agreda, two Catholic, mystic, devil-possessed nuns. From Anne Catherine Emmerich's, she wrote a book called The Dolores Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to hear what this says. This is taken from another Catholic website. It's called www.sacramentals.com. Once again, speaking very highly about this woman's work. It says this, based on the visions of this great mystic, the Dolores Passion recounts in incredible detail the horrendous sufferings undergone by our Savior in His superhumanly heroic act of redemption. Illuminating in its description of Mary's... Notice that. Notice how it goes from Christ, the central focus of man's redemption, and now there's a shift. And there's a purpose for the shift. Illuminating in its description of Mary's participation in the sufferings of her son, 
This book gives the reader a poignant understanding of why Our Lady is sometimes called Our Co-Redemptrix. What is the point? The point is, is that in the Passion... People are given the concept, there's two central themes. One are the physical sufferings of Christ. The other is the centrality of Mary in the sufferings of her son. Therefore making them co-redeemers. The other morning, I was running on the treadmill and I have a little booklet that I keep right there and I go through it. It's got memory verses and I go through my memory verses while I run. As I started to shut the machine down, there was a man stand, run, walking next to me, an, an older man. And he, uh, he said, what are you reading? I said, I have my Bible verses here, sir. And I go through them while I'm running. He said, oh, that's good. And I said, yeah, they really... They help me to focus in and, and really focus on what the Bible is saying. He said, oh, that's great. He said, have you seen it? Well, immediately I knew what he was talking about. I said, no, sir, have you? He said, absolutely I have. He said, it is marvelous to go see that movie. I said, well, sir, what stood out to you most in the movie? He didn't think for a moment. He said, you know what really struck me the most? I said, no. He said, it was the suffering, not of Christ, but of his mother. And he said, I felt, I felt so warmly attached to Mary as I watched the movie. Now, folk, what does Revelation chapter 16, verse 13 say? It says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For these are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. What am I saying? How does that verse tie in with the movie The Passion? The devil is using spiritualism. He is using the demonic influences of Anne Catherine Emmerich and Mary of Agreda to prepare the minds of the people that watch that movie to embrace Mary. So that when the satanic, spiritualistic manifestation of Mary is seen in our world, people will be ready to embrace her and everything she says. The man who played Jesus in the movie is named James Cavizio. He claims to be a devout Roman Catholic. This is his quote. The catharsis for me to play this role was through Medjugorje. Now Medjugorje is a place where the Virgin Mary has been seen over and over again. I believe it's in Yugoslavia. In preparation, I used all that Medjugorje taught me. Mel Gibson and I were going every day for Mass together. Some days I couldn't go, but I was receiving the Eucharist. He goes on down. I'm not going to read everything he said. 
He said, another thing I was doing was fasting. I read many of the passages continuously. Every day, everyone could see me with the rosary in my hands. I asked Mary to guide me and my career. And he closes with this. This film is something that I believe was made by Mary for her son. Mel Gibson, I'm quoting again from David Limbaugh's article, www.townhall.com. Mel Gibson declared this, I'm not a preacher and I'm not a pastor, but I really feel my career was leading me to make this. The Holy Ghost was working through me on this film, and I was just directing traffic. I hope the film has the power to evangelize. Folk, there is no question that a spirit was working through Mel Gibson on the movie The Passion. But I'm here to tell you today, it was not the Holy Ghost. And has the film, Mel Gibson says, I hope the film has the power to evangelize. You know, folk, it is doing a work of evangelization. It is bringing all people from every denomination in the world. James Dobson of Focus on the Family. Billy Graham. Paul Harvey. Now those are three, just to name a few of the people who are embracing. And there's one apostate Protestant church and probably, I haven't read, but I would guess... I will guess that if you look up a few Seventh -day, official Seventh-day Adventist websites, you will get a very positive feedback on this movie. Okay? Now, I haven't read any. Okay, I haven't read any. But I will guess that they will be very positive about this film. The interesting thing, folks, as I think back to the first few things I heard about this movie and my initial comments, the thoughts centered around the fact that Mel Gibson was anti-Jew or anti-Semitic. And that's what's been blaring all over the press. And folks, that is a wonderful smokescreen. When in reality, the great issue of this movie is this is built on demonic spirits who are trying to focus the viewers on Mary as co-redeemer. Kath Ann Catherine Emmerich. Very interesting person. She lived from 1774 to 1824. She was an Augustinian nun who carried the stigmata, the wounds of Christ. Do you know what that means? She actually bled from her head from her hands, from her side, for much of her life. It has been told in many articles that I read, in fact, this one right here, and this again is a Catholic website, graced by God to live long periods of time without any food or water, subsisting on the Holy Eucharist alone. This woman would go into fantasies, um, visions, ecstasies. So much of looking at this woman reminds me of another Catholic 
mystic, who was steeped in spiritualism, Ignatius Loyola. I want you to notice, Catherine Emmerich lived from 1774 to 1824. I want you to mark that date because it was just about two years after her death that another woman was born in the northeastern part of the United States of America by the name of Ellen Harmon. Anne Catherine Emmerich wrote a four-volume series on the life of Jesus Christ and biblical revelations. This woman, in vision from demonic spirits, was privileged to behold innumerable events of biblical times going back all the way to the creation of the world. She witnessed the fall of angels, the sin of Adam, Noah and the flood, the building of the Tower of Babel, the Old Testament patriarchs. Does that sound familiar? The life and beheading of St. John the Baptist, the life of St. Anne, St. Joseph, the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Mary Magdalene, and of course the birth, life, public ministry, crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Besides describing persons, places, events, and traditions in intimate detail, Anne Catherine Emmerich also sets forth the mystical significance of these visible realities, a veritable treasure of information and insight. And by the way, a gentleman called me this week from Arkansas. Ever since the beginning of the movie, The Passion, for the last two weeks, various Catholic sources have been inundated with requests for the books of St. Anne Catherine Emmerich and Mary of Agreda. And so all of these people who are going to be reading these books, who ultimately are they going to center in on as the center of their salvation? Who's it going to be? It's going to be on Mary, the demon Mary. She wrote a book called The Life of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is from www.marianland.com, another very Catholic pro and Catherine Emmerich. It says, incredibly revealing and edifying background of Our Lady, her parents and ancestors, plus other people who figured into the coming of Christ. Many facts described about the nativity, as well as the final days of the Blessed Mother, all from the visions of this great mystic. Sometimes it's nice in talks to come to the point where you say, well, this is the bottom line. Well, folk, here's the bottom line. The movie The Passion by Mel Gibson, inspired by demons, is a great plan of the devil to bring all the world through spiritualism and communication with the dead to embrace Mary and when she appears in our world to embrace her message of embracing Sunday worship. And that's where the passion fits into the great controversy.
And for Seventh-day Adventists, I want you to hear just a few more statements from Anne Catherine Emmerich and see if they don't sound familiar. She wrote this in 1821. I've had indescribable visions on the state of the church, both in general and in particular. I saw the church militant under the symbol of a city like the heavenly Jerusalem, though it was still on earth. Where have you heard words like those? The church militant? The heavenly Jerusalem? In it were streets, palaces, and gardens through which I wandered and saw processions. I recognized the interior state of each. I saw their thoughts issuing from their mouths under the form of pictures. I saw the Holy Father very prayerfully and God-fearing his figure perfect, though worn out by old age and manifold sufferings. Yeah. Now, isn't that interesting? Notice, notice this. I didn't notice it before. His figure perfect, though worn out by old age and manifold sufferings. He often fainted away and seemed to be dying. Is it possible that what this woman was seeing was similar to what Ellen White said when she saw the ugly tearing away of the devil. You remember when she yeah. says his, his skin is sagging? You remember that vision that she had? Yep. In early That's right, in early writings. Yes. I have had another vision on the great tribulation everywhere. It seemed as if something were exacted by the clergy. The old faithful in their distress submitted to the interdict and closed their churches. Okay. Well. I believe, folks, that Anne Catherine Emmerich was given by the demon Mary to see certain things as a counterfeit to what would come through the writings of Ellen G. White many, many years later. A false prophet would arise to deceive many. Mel Gibson's The Passion, it is evangelizing. It was inspired by a spirit. It is preparing the world through the spirits of devils working miracles to go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Mel Gibson has been inspired to evangelize through the demonic spirits of the other world, through demons from hell. Father in heaven, I pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit Amen. to truly evangelize, to go to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people and cry out to fear God and give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment has come. To warn the world if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Father in heaven, please imbue us with your spirit from on high to give your messages throughout this world 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.